Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to World of Tanks. I'm sorry I've been gone for a while, but to make up for it, and for my triumphant return to YouTube and videos, I'm going to do a tank review on the machine I have been enjoying the most lately, which is, of course, the Centurion Action 10. So for those of you who didn't know previously, the Centurion 7-1 was actually my favourite tank in the game. I really could not get along with the FE4202, but since they changed it to the Action 10, I have been playing so many tier 10 games, and I just had an absolute rampage of a game, which you guys are going to see in a little bit. So, first things first, let's get on to the stats. This tank has 1,950 hit points, which is respectable. It weighs 55.45 tons with my current setup, and I am using vents, gun rammer, and vertical stabilizer, which I do recommend all three of those things if you're going to be running with this tank. And 55 tons means that this thing is actually a very, very dangerous ramming tank. It is also quite a high profile. If we compare it to something like... It's quite a heavy tank. So we'll go side by side compared to like a T-29. It's, it's about the same size. It's a big tank. Um, but it can shift as well. It's got 1,040 um, horsepower engine. Top speed of 53 kilometers per hour. This thing can move very, very fast. In fact, its power to weight ratio is 18.76. This thing can get going very, very quickly. It's a very nippy little tank. Um, well, I say little. Traverse speed 50 degrees per second. It's a medium tank. It's going to be fast on its feet. It's going to be. Able, it's going to be able to maneuver well. Um, hull armor is terrible. You've got 120 millimeters at the front, which isn't actually that bad for a medium. Especially when you look at the sloping that's at. But the sides and rear are absolute just garbage. 50 millimeters there, 31 millimeters at the rear. Obviously the same on the side. You do have a little bit of spaced armor going on here, but that's not going to do anything against the kind of guns you're going to be facing. The turret is really interesting. Because on paper, this, this tank has 198 millimeters of frontal turret armor, um, which isn't which is very, which is nice, but when you look at the actual sloping of it, and the actual shape of the turret, that slope there, it's a very odd slope because it starts off sharp and it kind of picks up a little bit. So if they hit you, if you get shot about here on the turret, it's going to bounce off. If you get shot up here, there's much more of a chance the shell's actually going to go in. Um, and then you've got this little lip at the bottom, which... I can't really say I've ever been penetrated down here. The only time I've been penetrating a turret has been up here or in the unfortunately quite large commander's cupola up here. But to be honest, it's a medium tank. If they're gonna, if people are gonna start shooting at you, they are gonna be firing into your hull, your sides, or whatnot. So, onto the gun, and oh, I love this gun. It is the 105 Royal Ordnance Cannon L7A2 that you have on the Centurion 7-1. I'll just check that, actually. Okay, no, it's not. <laughs> it's slightly different. Now, the reason, now, for all intents and purposes, that is the same gun, except it's got some, uh, it's got some colours going around it. So it looks a little cooler. Um, but the reason this is a different gun is actually to do with the ammunition this thing fires. This thing gets heat ammunition. For its premium shells. And these heat rounds have some seriously high penetration up to three they from 293 to 400 sorry 248 penetration to 413. But basically that's 330 millimeters of average penetration with those heat shells of which I'm running with seven. But you're probably not going to need very many of them because the APCR on this thing has 168 millimeters of penetration, which is very high anyway. This gun is lethal, and it was very good on the 7 one. But on this tank, you can on this tank, it's a lot better. Um, where is the rate of fire on this thing? It's down here, isn't it? 6.98 rounds per minute. Plus a gun rammer. You can reload the gun. I think it's about 7.32 seconds. It's going to take me to reload the gun. In the gameplay, you're going to see. And I absolutely love this tank. It's all in the HD model, of course, and it's just gorgeous. I love it. I really love it. Then again, it is British, and I'm also British. The only thing I don't know 
and I'm hoping someone can enlighten me in the comments, is shouldn't that be a 50 caliber machine gun on top? Instead of the 30 caliber. I don't know what that's about. I might be wrong. I don't know that much about this tank. Normally I do with things like this. But anyway, that's enough staring at this thing in the garage. You guys want to see some gameplay. So let's get to it. Alright then guys, so as promised, here is the gameplay. So I literally just recorded this match. Um, I'm not going to mess around with the camera or anything. I'm just going to let it play out so you guys can see how I played the match. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got a pretty good matchup right now. It's a tier 10 game, obviously. Fair few tier 9s about on either side. And a couple of light tanks, which we're going to see later. We're pretty much going to see everybody. Before I'll give it a nice little happy hunting chaps. I don't know why, but I went into this game feeling very, very confident. And I think that confidence is probably going to pay off. <laughs> so we're on Muravanka. Um, one thing I neglected to mention just now is this gun has 390 um, average damage with its APCR and E rounds. Now, unfortunately, it's not showing us the reload on the gun, but it is about 7.32 seconds. So it's Muravanka. This game's going to start out well. It starts out kind of slow, but when it gets going, it just doesn't stop. But I'm going to spend pretty much the entire game on this ridge. Not just camping and taking shots. That's what I'm going to do for the moment, but all these ridges along this side of the map. Yeah, it's giving where I spend most of my time. Now, I really should have taken that shot a bit sooner. I couldn't quite get the angle right. T10 spotted down there. That other Centurion Action 10 has been very aggressive. Now, that's going to be quite important later on, because I'm playing quite passively right now. I've got the Amex CVC on my, on my side. The Panther gets spotted. And those guys get spotted over there, and I think, oh, I think I'll take a shot at that Panther. There is a Yeager and a T10 down there. T10 replacement for the ISA, in case you didn't know. Well, oh, they're effectively the same tank. I get one into the Panther. This gun's very, very accurate. Having a little look round. My phone goes buzz. The FV4005 appears. And I think at that point there, I'll just stop for a second, I was actually checking my phone. Big lot of text today, leading into Christmas and everything. So the Type 4 Heavy appears. I'd never actually faced any of the high tier Japanese heavies until this point, so that was quite scary. The Yeager nearly gives me a shot at his lower plate. We're going to see him again a bit later. Uh, I don't know what the hell was going on down here, but these guys are really struggling with this 1390. I get one into him. Now, why the Amex CDC just sat there and let him shoot him, I don't know. But I think it's little things like that that are actually going to cost us this match. We are going to lose it. It's a huge risk here against the 4005. Just shot straight past my head. That could have killed me. Depending on what ammunition he was firing. Get another shot into him. Jaeguru goes kamikaze. We've got a lot of heavies down there. So we've got a Jaeguru, a T10, a Type 4, and something else. What was that? An IS-7 all down there against, well, our IS-4. And then there's me. Now, I'm not falling back at this point. Normally, I would be. I'm also not going to support these guys just yet. I am now, because I've realised, since you're in Action 10 and the CDC, are coming around the flank. What these heavies have done is they have just put themselves in a perfect crossfire position. Now, this... I don't know what the hell the Type the, the type 4 was doing here, but... I donk a shell into his gunman, and he finds HE into my face. So that does basically no damage. Pop out again. Back of his turret. I'm firing the heat rounds. I'm not taking any chances. I need to kill this guy. Donk the shell on that angle. The IS-7's behind me. And I'm thinking, oh god, this is it. And then, put a heat round into his side. He gets hit by the artillery. I'm going to take another shot from him. Probably. No, I'm not. <laughs> the circle of death. He's tracked. Now he could. What he should do 
Now that he was on track, if one of those had opened to turn his ult towards me, he would have been able to get another shot into me. And if he had done that, this game wouldn't have been nearly as good for me as it will be. And you're going to see why in just a second. So the T10 appears, the R other action 10 has disappeared. He's gone to fight the artillery, and I think he just took a massive hit from it. I can't quite get a shot at the T10, but he's going to fire one at me and bounce off my turret. Nearly hit the cupola. Will I come up behind him? Track him, which is quite annoying because that was my heat rounds. The T54 appears from nowhere. Finish him off. It's the alpha damage of this gun coming into play. Take one on the side from the T10. He was firing heat as well, you can tell by the sizzle. I didn't aim that shot very well, I was just more panicking, thinking, my god, I've got to get around behind this guy. I'm down. I've got no heat rounds left when I finish off the T10. And it's then I realised there's only three of us left against four enemy tanks, and they're all down there. But if you've noticed, how every single tank that came up this side, we were able to deal with. Aggressive medium tank action. So it's me and the other action 10 alone now against four enemy tanks. I don't know if those guys are particularly high tier, but it doesn't. Well, they're all. They've got two tier 9s, one tier 10, and then the tier 7 light tank, the Schwer Panzer, who we're about to see. I donk that shell. Schwer Panzer fires and misses. I stop. I take too long to aim. He gets one into me. I get one into him. And I'm thinking, my god, I've got to kill this guy. I, d I didn't pay any attention to the fact that the M103 had just popped up there, and I take a shot from him, and that is going to be costly. If I hadn't taken that shot, I probably could have, we probably could have won this match. Now, the Action 10 has charged in there, not realising that I haven't followed him over. I've stayed back to deal with the Spear Panzer. I deemed him too dangerous to be kept alive. Light tanks at this late on in the game, very, very dangerous. Now the action tends in a bit of a pickle here, and he doesn't succeed in killing any of these tanks. He's obviously he's going to die, and at this one thing, okay, we've lost the game now. It's just yeah, he's dead. There's it, these guys are too tightly packed together. I come around, I kill the M103, and I'm thinking, okay, that's it. I just don't have the health. I can't take one shot from any of these guys. The first he's 75 there in chat, telling me to run, and very rightly so because that is what I'm going to do. Object 140 up there. He's coming for me. He's coming. I run up the side of the slope, I kill him. I back up, because I put that. 5120's coming over. Now, the 5120's an auto load. He actually fires and misses any other tank, and I probably would have lived, but I get around the corner, and he finishes me off. Five kills. Defeat. Heartbreak. Okay, guys, so after that absolute heartbreak. Ah, look at this. First class mastery badge. All sorts of badges. All sorts of badges. So for the defeat. 4,942 damage. Nearly 5k damage done. 679 base experience. I actually did the most damage out of everyone in the game. Not the most kills as well. There's, yeah, a bit more detail. I actually lost money in that match because I fired all those heat rounds. I only lost about 7,000 credits for my premium account. When you're playing a tier 10, you need to be running a premium account, guys, but... Yeah. Absolute heartbreak, that one, but... I do love the Centurion 7 slash... Not, not 7 slash 1, the Action 10. I do love the 7 slash 1, and I'll probably do a review on that at some point pretty soon as well. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.